Hi guys. So in this part, okay, we're going to talk about destructor. Before that, let's run through a bit of slides, okay, and see what we're talking about, okay? All right. So uh, we have a slide here, okay? As you can see, okay, in this slide, okay, uh, we have already covered a few things in the previous video where we talk about what is access function, what is utility functions, okay? So you can actually have a, have a deeper look and try out more examples given in the slide, okay, of the utility functions and access function. Uh, all right, another thing that we want to talk about is basically object size. We can read about this, okay, and uh, we can also talk about class scope, but uh, I'm going to skip this for now, right? We are going to talk more about constructors and destructors, okay, but more on destructors as you already know what constructors are, I mean, uh, from the earlier videos. But you must also know that constructors, just like any other function, you can actually perform default arguments just like this, right? As you can see, I can have default arguments on constructors, okay? And it works like that, and how I separate into different files, okay? And due to the default values, I can actually create multiple different objects, which is T1, T2, T3, T4. Okay, with multiple different arguments uh, because the rest will be defaulted. And the more important thing is destructor. Okay, before you get the idea about destructor, okay, destructor just like constructor. Okay, even if we don't define a constructor, uh, you know by default the constructor runs uh, at the back end of the program execution. So does destructors. But what does destructor do? Uh, constructor, okay create the object okay destructor destroy the objects when does it destroy the object uh, whenever the functions that contain that that object ends right and therefore the object will be destroyed to free up the memory okay so here is a longer version of destructor but i'm going to create a brand new program to show you how the destructor works but you can see from the remaining of this uh, slide, okay, create and destroy is basically another example of how you can use constructor and destructor. Please do these examples in your own time to get a better understanding of how it is being done. Okay, all right, let's close this for now. Okay, remember the previous program that we have? We have student.h, we have main, and we have student cpp, right? So we're going to add another one called destructor, okay? So you must know that uh, I think before we move on, I'm going to like uh, reverse this into one file so that you can see everything at one go, which, which will be easier for you to understand how it works. So first, I'm going to delete this student.h, delete student.cpp, and we have remaining main. I've copied the previous file. Remember this one, okay, where everything is still there. And if I run this program, it's going to work fine, just as uh, what you would expect previously. Just like that, JSON, quiz1, 1, 21, and 23. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, now, let's talk about destructor. Okay, now you know we have a constructor, which is this. We can have overload a constructor. Same thing, we can have a destructor. Okay, when I run the program a while ago, right, okay, you can see that I've created an object called S1 in main, and main is a function, right? So at line number 38, this is where the object is created, okay? And once once the function uh, is done, which is at line number 42, that is when the destructor is being called to destroy. The object destroy meaning freeing uh, the memory capacity that is given to that object so that that memory can be reused for some other uh, implementation okay so even if you don't um i mean uh define a constructor the constructor the constructor still runs okay by default just like a constructor but i would like to define my destructor and to see when the destructor works and to show you okay the objective is to get the destructor to show when it works, which is after the last line of your output. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is this is what I'm going to do. A destructor is very simple. Same as the constructor, it has the same name as the class. 
Okay, you can have parameters if you want, but uh, for any reason, destructor is not being called like that. So I create a destructor. The only difference between constructor and destructor is that in destructor, you put a tilde in front of it. Okay, tilde. And that makes it a destructor. And this is a constructor. And by the end of the execution, let's say I want to do this. I just want to print the value, let's say, and object. Okay, and I'm going to put a name there uh, in this case, right? And then I'm going to uh, write end it, okay? And I put a backslash n in the end. So, whenever the object is being destroyed, okay, right? I will end it and the destructor will run at the end of this program and see out object whatever it is ended okay let's try so run the program okay so let's say i put j right quiz one quiz two right and right after i print your carry marks is 35 you can see that it is written object j ended so you must know that the destructor is being called automatically. There is no need to call the destructor. Okay, just like when you create an object, when you create a new object, automatically the constructor runs. It can run automatically uh, by default. Okay, or it can run according to your definition. And automatically, by the end of this function, main function, object S1 will be released, will be destroyed automatically. But now I want it to be destroyed. Destroyed with my definition and this is what i do okay i'm gonna have a message here and there uh the most important part for you to know about constructor and destructor especially sorry in destructor okay the most important thing about destructor is the differences between automate automatic objects and uh static objects automatic objects is like what you have seen here which is student s1 right where it will be destroyed right after the function ends okay but for static objects it will stay a bit longer right and we will create now a program to show you how it works okay right so i'm gonna like clear up the whole thing here okay i'm gonna create a new class and show you what i'm talking about so let's call it class uh, open close okay right and class open cl uh, close will have one value which is x for example and there's sorry i have no value there okay and it has uh, one constructor let's say i have a string as well okay so let's say constructor uh, open close right okay and my constructor is going to accept an integer a and string uh, m I, I don't know why just just see so I have a x equals to the integer a and um, n equals to the integer m so whenever i create an object right i'll be sending an integer and i'll be sending a string so x equals to a and okay right so i'll be storing a into x and m into n from the external values that will be created later on now i'm going to create another destructor function okay sorry destructor okay and upon destroying the object i'm gonna say um our print number x okay and i'm gonna put the symbol n then i'm going to print the string okay and then i'm gonna say destroyed destroyed okay next video